Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first video that is coming out in nearly two weeks on the channel while I have been sorting out a few personal issues including with myself over the past couple of weeks. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all those who have still stuck around with the channel and just been watching a, any number of the previous videos that have been out over the past eight or nine months. But for now, let's get back into what we do best. Coming up is a club guide for La Liga side Villarreal in Spain. If you're looking forward to that, make sure to hit the like button and click subscribe down below just to help out the channel as well in the algorithms. Yeah, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you all so much. But now, let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome back to another club guide here on Football Manager 2021. My name is Craig and coming up today we are going over a club who as of May 2021 which is when this video has been recorded and when it is out we are on the verge of the Europa League final in literally about three days as I just quickly check my calendar to make sure I know what day it is. This coming Wednesday it will be Manchester United versus the club that we are going to be looking at today Villa Real. Villa Real of La Liga in Spain, otherwise known as El S I've only just literally seen this for the first time. El Submarino El Submarino Amarillo. That's gonna really sound very good, isn't it? El Submarino Amarillo. I'm guessing that's uh, Villa Real's nickname, if you will, but we'll get more familiar with Villa Real as we go through the club. So I've just taken over Villarreal for the first time and we're going to go through a little quick summary of the good old La Liga semi-giants I suppose if you will. I mean uh, if they win the Europa League they're going to the Champions League next season. You're going to have to consider them as one of the teams who are up there. So as far as reputation goes Villarreal four stars out of five. I wouldn't say that they're on the level of Barcelona or Real Madrid or even Atletico Madrid but it's still a very very solid outfit. Media prediction uh, predicting them to finish 7th, so definitely a good chance of European football for you in your first season, well you're in Europa League so possibly Champions League you could go for for the second season. They play at the Estadio de la uh, Ceramica, sorry some of these names are going to be pronounced so so badly, the Estadio de la Ceramica. Only 23,500 capacity, that's quite low for a team in top half of La Liga and that's going all the way back to 1923 that stadium, so they've been there for nearly a hundred years. Uh, they also have excellent training facilities, excellent youth facilities and excellent youth recruitment all at the training ground of Ciudad Deportiva de Miracamp and the upcoming season of course La Liga, the Spanish Cup and in the Europa League at the group stage already. Their, looks like their one major trophy has been the Spanish 3rd Division, Group 5, back in 1970. Good chance for you to rewrite some history, assuming Villarreal don't do that already in real life. But regardless of what they're going to be doing this coming Wednesday, their best team allegedly is in a 4-3-3 formation. Any familiar names that they may have, Essential as their goalkeeper, I've heard of him before, as of course uh, Raul, yeah Raul, Albiol is also there as well. I didn't realise he was still at Villarreal. Interesting, we'll come to him anyway when we go through the squad. Mario Gaspar, I've heard of him as well, and Pedraza. Francis Coquelin, as an Arsenal boy, I remember him very, very well. Ibora is still there. And Chukwuza, uh, Chukese, Chukese, I think his name is. Again, these names can be pronounced terribly. I remember this man as well. He was He's one of their best players, certainly, so far this season. We'll go through the players more and more as we go through the squad. Now, for the club vision itself, the board are looking for you to develop the club, uh, sorry, develop players using the club's youth system. That is desired. Fair enough. I think as long as the training facility, uh, sorry, the youth facilities stay good, just keep them uh, up to date as much as you possibly can every year and sign players under the age of 21 for the future is favoured, it's not a requirement but we play football manager for young players and wonder kids I don't think this is going to be much of a problem in the uh, in the long term work within the wage budget is standard 
As for the current season, the Spanish Cup, they want you to reach the final minimum. So too bad if you get Real Madrid or Barcelona in one of the rounds, you've got to go and beat them. They want you to qualify for the Euro Cup, which as a top seven team should be more than doable for you. And in the Europa League itself, actually, they want you to reach the semi-final, considering what Villarreal have done in real life. You could probably reach the final as long as you get a favourable draw. Well, we didn't look actually below, but they want, the board want you to work to becoming the best of the rest in La Liga. So now we've come to the main game itself and we're in the club summary. A history of Villarreal over the last 20 years. As you can see, they actually got promoted to La Liga way back in 2000. And since then, oh no, they were down in the second division in 2013. They were down in Segunda um, division. Wow, I didn't realise they even got relegated, but they got relegated in 2012, came straight back up the next season, not even as the champions. And since then, they've been a top 10 side, to be honest, bar one season they finished 14th. That was a couple of years ago. Since then, they last season they bounced back to 5th. But otherwise, it looks like that was just a complete aberration that season in 2012. But as uh, confirms, they are four-star reputation, secure finances, they have, they're in the Europa League. Oh, they were founded in 1923, so they haven't even moved ground anywhere, ever. And yet, yeah, their nickname, as confirmed, El Submarino Amarillo. I can say it now, I feel happy about that. And as far as their fierce rivals go, Valencia, of course, is one of their local rivals, also of La Liga. Castellon, I don't even know what division these guys are in, they're in the division below, you won't have to worry about them. Levante and Alicante, they're thereabouts around La Liga, so you probably come up against them every now and then. As far as legends go, Bruno. Okay, he's just an unemployed coach, right? He's someone who spent his entire career at Villarreal, that's fine. Santi Cazorla, again as an Arsenal man, I know Cazorla very, very well. Still miss him to this day, to be honest. Marcos Senna, who has been in the... Oh, I can't even click on him, can't be the right Senna. I'm thinking about the current Senna, who's in the Spanish setup, but can't be the same guy. Manuel Pellegrini, of course, put warmly of uh, Villarreal's manager and Manchester City and West Ham. Juan Roman Riquelme, I remember him well. He played for Villarreal way back in the mid noughties um, He played for Villarreal in the semi final of the Champions League when they faced Arsenal way back in 2006. And he was the one who missed that penalty after 88 minutes, layman saving for him, which had me on my knees realising we were going to the Champions League final. Didn't end well, but that's another story anyway. But yeah, Vakelme, I remember him very well. The Argentinian who hasn't... I've never really heard of him since, to be honest. Robert Perez, again, Arsenal. Villarreal and Arsenal are just linked all the time. And it continues with uh, Emery being the real manager of Villarreal now. Of course, former Arsenal manager recently. And Rua Barrena, I've heard of that name, but I'm not too sure about him. Diego Forlan, of course, of Manchester United. Victor Fernandez, I'm sure I've heard that name before as well. Nice little trip down memory lane there. But certainly a lot of legends, icons and favourite personnel for you to live up to. Hopefully you can add your name to that list as soon as possible. Maybe win La Liga, that will probably do it for you. And of course the club vision we'd already seen anyway. As far as finances go, 22.5 million in the bank. Not too shabby for a top 10 La Liga size. We're not talking about Premier League money here. But I know from recent history, a lot of the La Liga money, TV money especially, goes to the likes of Barca, Real and Atletico Madrid. They're the ones who hog a lot of the money. So if you want a fair slice of the pie, get yourself into that top three with Villarreal. Transfer budget at the start will be 13.7 million. Of course, any fringe players you may have, see if you can try to offload them, get that transfer budget up. And as far as wage budget goes, 963,000 a week. Of which you're spending 925, so you've got 38, yeah, about 38k of transfer budget still to use. Certainly enough to bring in maybe one or two good quality players, to be honest. And so we now come to the squad screens. Of course, when you start out save, one of the first things that you'll want to do, of course, is evaluate your squad. So if quickly we just go to current ability, it's quite evenly spread as far as current ability goes if you just go by star ratings to start with. So your best player is Pau Torres, a 23-year-old Spanish centre-back, 
four star current ability and he's pretty much at the top range of his potential by the looks of it he's come through Villarreal's youth system minus a quick loan spell at Malaga a few seasons prior, uh, prior. but he has experience now in the first division certainly looks, looks like a player who you can rely on effectively as a central defender good player for most first division sides could be a leading first division player in the future certainly one of the players that you could potentially build your side around which is always a good place to start just having a look through his pros he's a leading first division player yep, relishes the big matches so you're gonna have plenty of those in La Liga but he might be a little injury prone so it is worth keeping an eye on him but attributes wise he's looking very very good six foot three centre back what's not to love about this guy I mean look at him he's capped by Spain as well so there's definitely some good potential around him and as far as age goes in the squad your youngest player in the first team is 21 we'll go through the youth squad in a little bit it's a bit of an aging squad to be fair Raul Albiol of course he's in his mid 30s now but there's a, a few players here early 30s as well Etienne Capoue formerly of Watford is there as well yeah you might be looking to replace a few of these players if not in the first season certainly in your second season just try and get some fresh blood into this squad who knows we might be able to find a few youth prospects who will be able to help you do that right so tactics one of the most important parts of getting to know a squad where are your squad's strengths and just by looking at the current tactics that I selected and all I did was just click the preset tactics that the assistant manager is is suggesting so Gagan Press naturally a lot of sides in Europe to be fair are good for a Gagan Press uh, the fluid counter attack and the control possession are the main tactics that have been recommended for Villarreal based on your squad uh, just judging by the, the team that has been selected is after doing a quick pick central defender of course Paul Torres who we already had a look at Francis Coquelin and Danny Parejo are likely to be your best central midfielders with Gerard Moreno the Gerard Moreno a 28 year old Spanish centre forward still looks like a good all rounder with some certainly some very very good finishing composure by the looks of it this man is likely to be your main striker certainly at the start of the first season he came through Badalona's academy before moving to Villarreal and since then he left Villarreal and then just came back Espanyol made a nice little profit on him didn't they and since then he has been scoring albeit not at a what you call top rate level might be worth looking to get a striker in to be honest with you although he's good for most La Liga sides Francis Coquelin a 29 year old French central midfielder also defensive midfielder as well I know this man Oops, pretty well from his time at Arsenal and it's been a few years since he actually left he, it's actually, he went to Valencia first I didn't even realise that so he moved from Valencia to their rivals Villarreal literally for this season that's got to be quite a controversial signing for the fans to say the least good player for La Liga I think we found his level very brave but he's also very inconsistent when presented with the chances my suggestion don't let him go forward don't put him in a striker role basically but otherwise Gagan Press could be is looking likely to be your main fit your main tactic but it's also worth considering a fluid counter attack especially against the likes of of course the Madrid's and your Barcelona's of the world control possession also in a 4-2-3-1 not too dissimilar to a Gagan Press just about the constant pressing of course so squad depth wise we're in the team reports and here we're just going to have a look at where which areas you should probably look to actually try and strengthen first so up front Alcacer Moreno for um, striker role if you're only playing with one striker up front to be honest with you it looks like you could have some good options up front already mentals on this guy is actually really good and he's only 26 years old Paco Alcacer formerly of Barcelona as well I mean that's not too shabby to be honest a former Barcelona player in your ranks of course of Dortmund as well he can score goals by the looks of it just not at an alarming rate so again if you want an out and out striker who's just going to bag you a lot of goals might be worth uh, scouting the market for a striker especially as you raise more transfer funds in the meantime 
On the wings, you may want to look to getting another left winger in, someone who's really going to shine out as that main quality player. A bit like Moreno, who can play on the right-hand side. So if Alcacer starts up front, Moreno can play on the right-hand side, which isn't too shabby. Central midfield, you've got quite a few options. Cochrane, Ibora, Parejo, Kapura and Trigueros should be decent backup options for you as well. In defence, central defence is looking decent enough. Uh, right back and left back, again there's options there. In fact, if we just take this down to three star, should have done that in the beginning. Yeah, there's options uh, on the right hand side and left hand side of your defence. But it might be worth looking for that player who could, again, stand out as that quality starter for Villarreal. Goalkeeper wise, you got Asensio. Who, if I can click on him, there he is. He's 31 years old, but most goalkeepers are still good, well into their 30s anyway. Three and a half star current ability. He's been at Villarreal for several years now, so he's definitely a first team player by the looks of it. He's, uh, by the looks of it, a very reliable hand for Villarreal over the last seven or eight years. You might want to look to replacing him, unless Ruli is going to do it. No, 28 years old, he's not much younger. Again, in looking for a younger keeper might be a good priority for you in your first one or two seasons. A young goalkeeper, say from, I don't know, maybe a Scandinavian academy potentially, or from Belgium. I, know, I heard Ghent or Club Bruges actually do a good goalkeeper in and of themselves every now and then. But you've got a 28 year old and a 31 year old goalkeeper who, uh, to be honest, I think they can be improved upon, certainly in the long term. It'd probably be best looking for a good backup option, as well as a good potential goalkeeper for the future. But otherwise, for now, two solid goalkeepers is fine. What you're really looking for in this first transfer window, or the first season in general, two excellent quality full-backs or wing-backs, whichever one you use. If you insist on using an attacking midfielder, probably an attacking midfielder as well, or defensive midfielder. So if we just check a 4-4-1-1, Formation, which would be the fluid counter attack. There's still no actual defensive midfielder in there anyway. But again, if you're insisting on using an attacking midfielder or defensive midfielder, it might be worth trying to dip into the market for one of those as well. Same for wingers. There's not too many options for the wings in terms of actual quality, especially as Ontiveros is out on loan, it seems, for the season. So again, going forward... You might need some uh, quality attacking options, especially if you want to bag regular goals to try and challenge the top three as, as the season goes on, or rather in future seasons. Okay, so we're almost getting to the end of just going through Villarreal as a club to potentially manage in Football Manager, and we're going to come to the staff guide next, a staff page, where you've got a lot of spaces for coaches, to be honest. I mean, fill these out. As ever, fill out all the spaces as soon as you can. Performance analysts as well needed, especially in the goalkeeper area where you're kind of lacking for goalkeepers. Everywhere else, you're at least average. So as you bring in more coaches, you're just going to improve these anyway, so it's not too much to worry about. But goalkeeper-wise, a goalkeeping coach is an absolute necessity for you. Uh, Scouts-wise, you also have a lot of open vacancies of offer scouts, technical director, recruitment analyst get these guys in, fill up the spaces and a loan manager as well, that will come in handy for all the players that you send out on loan or who are out on loan already you can't really tell how average you are in fact yeah, actually you're literally just sitting at average for the scouting potential and current ability and analysing data so as you fill up these spaces again you're just going to make your club that much stronger, I say that that much stronger obviously you get this get these attributes up towards this yellow line, you're going to be challenging that top three in terms of staff that they can present to you. Oh, sorry, against you, more to the point. And as for your medical team, you've got spaces for physios. In fact, all three are physios. Sports, I would say bring in one or two physios, but then get a sports scientist in because you are lacking heavily in sports science, which is going to impact how the severity of injuries throughout a season. So may I suggest just get them in, fill these up, and just give your players a chance when it comes to injuries, because we all know they happen, and they happen at the most inconvenient of times. 
it's happened too often recently. And finally, we come to a part of Football Manager that gets overlooked a lot, but as, as players, we really look forward to a good new gen day or region day. I, you see, I've only been playing Football Manager for the last year. I'm still confused as to whether it's a region or new gen. Please don't kill me. Anyway, there are, looks like there's some good potential in the Villarreal uh, Youth Academy, or in the C team, certainly. So we've got the Villarreal under-19s B team, a C team. Don't know why. But it looks like some good players here who, for all intents and purposes, could become very world uh, very good world-class players in the future. Alex Boehner, who's already a two-and-a-half star Cutler Beast player. Fernando Nino is in the same boat as well. In fact, Baino is a 19-year-old Spanish winger slash attacking midfielder. And he looks to be an all-rounder already. And he's only 19 years old. Now, he's come through Villarreal's youth system. He hasn't come from anywhere else. But by the looks of it, he's been developing pretty decently. He's currently at La Liga 2 level, so second division. But with that first division, La Liga potential. He might be someone that you want to bring into your first team squad to just give yourself a few more numbers in terms of the first team squads. Uh, Fernando Nino is in the same boat, 19 year old Spanish striker, company 2 and a half star pen, uh, ability, 5 star potential, he's got very good finishing, you might want to bring this guy up into your first team squad. ASAP, give him a run out in pre-season, see what he can do, if, he's, if he just bangs in the goals for you, it might be worth starting maybe at the beginning of the season, I mean it's unlikely, but you never know, he's got that potential to be a first division player. Ability to strike a ball sweetly makes him a good finisher. He's also really good in the air. Uh, six foot three, I can believe that. Sling him up for corners. If you bring him on, make sure he's on for corners. Uh, Jeremy Pino is also a four and a half star current ability potential player. Oh, sorry, not current, potential ability player. Philip Jorgensen as well. 17, 18 year old, respectively. Oh, I say you should look for a young goalkeeper. You might already have him. In your new squad, Philip Jorgensen, 18 year old Swedish goalkeeper. What did I say about Scandinavian uh, academies? In this case, he's not from a Scandinavian academy, but he's Swedish. Therefore, you have to think he's got some very, very good talent around him. And judging by his attributes, they're not going to be the most impressive in the world, but he's only 18. He can still grow massively. Does he have that potential? Yes, he does to be a first division player. He's currently, I'm going to guess that Spanish lower leagues, but with that potential to be a first division player, he might be someone that you want to have a look at in the following few seasons. Send him out on loan as well, either this season or next season, because he's 18 years old. He needs to be getting some game time. If by the looks of it, he's had zero game time while at Villarreal. So get him out on loan as soon as you can. Yomi Pino, we haven't had a look at him, he's a 17 year old Spanish winger, both sides by the looks of it, looks like he's as good on either side, which is an excellent, excellent thing to have in your squad, 2.5 star current ability, 4.5 star potential, started life at Las Palmas before moving to Villarreal, has a spell at Roda, but we don't know if he actually plays there, but he did play for Villarreal C last season, again he's got that potential, oh, it's it says he can improve a lot, I'm going to guess that means he could be a La Liga player in the future. He's a spirited individual as well. I like that. But by the looks of things, you've got quite a good youth set up here. Which, to be honest with you, if these are all first team candidates, give them a go in pre-season. See how they do. And if they are performing well, either send them out on loan or put them in your senior team for the season. I'm thinking the likes of Alec Boehner and Fernando Nino might actually get first team minutes. It's just a prediction, but I honestly think you give them that time on the pitch in the first team, they will come good for you, like any other player who you give time to. And that is the club guide for Villarreal. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found this maybe motivational, inspirational for going to La Liga and maybe taking over a club in that division. If so, give Villarreal a try. Top 10 La Liga side, potential to challenge the top three powerhouses in La Liga, and also European competition in your first season. Meaning, if you bring in players, you can bring in decent players 
not necessarily for expensive amounts of money, but quality players who will come in hopefully on the cheap. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you really, really enjoyed this. Wishing luck as well to Villarreal against Manchester United in the Europa League final. Hopefully they can pull out the win. Certainly Unite Emery's record in this competition speaks for itself over the last 10 years. But thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next Club Guys that I'll do later this week. Hint, it involves the Champions League final. Take care guys.